Dr. K is an actual psychologist. And Dr. K, on that note, can you tell us the difference, if there is one, between a psychologist and a psychiatrist? Okay. And so I'm actually a psychotherapist, which adds another one to the mix. Welcome to the Mary D Show. I'm your host, Mary D, here to be your guide as we extract wisdom and life lessons from top CEOs, thought leaders, artists, spiritual luminaries, and wellness experts. My intention is to bring you value in every show that sparks an idea, helps you break a limiting belief, or encourages you to create thoughts that uplevel your life so that you can know from the deepest parts of your soul that everything you want is available to you and that abundance is your birthright. In 2018, I healed from breast cancer holistically after surgery without the use of chemotherapy or pharmaceuticals. I love biohacking and plant medicine and exploring spirituality and what it means to be in relationship with spirit so that we can feel whole and complete no matter what life throws at us. My specialty in the business world is strategy and leadership, and my gift to each of you is my ability to listen so that I can help others see themselves. In each episode, I want to sprinkle you with some hope dust, tickle your funny bone, and inspire you to find your inner roar. Get ready to live your most aligned, purposeful, and joy-filled life now, and enjoy the show. Psychotherapist, which means that I've done a lot, a lot of work with patients directly on problems that you'd find in that DSM, like generalized anxiety disorder, or it might be bipolar, it might be depression, it could be all kinds of things. But people who do psychotherapy generally are not medicators unless they're a psychiatrist or in some states a psychologist, but they're really trained in the clinical work of handling mental health conditions. I love that. And I read on your website that you've done something north of like 100,000 hours of research. We talked about 10,000 hours being mastery. So 100,000 hours is, what do we call that? Like superhero status? I don't know. It's 100,000 hours of included research, therapy, consulting, mentoring, teaching, training, all kinds of stuff like that. So it's a lot, but I've got to say, I figured it out one day and it was kind of crazy. And it's north of that at this point, but I love it. It's never felt like, oh my God, you did 100,000 hours or someone pointed out early on, that's 10,000 hours times 10, but you know, master times 10. I'm really blessed that I love what I do. Yeah, that's so important. What do you know now that you wish you had known before you got into this field? Okay, so I'm going to answer it by backtracking just a second because sure. I do psychotherapy, but I also do mentoring. Okay, I do mentoring. And there's a difference. I used to think everybody needed psychotherapy, right? Because we could all use to grow and get healthier. I mean, none of us comes into this life without a lot of challenges. But what I know now, and that wasn't one of the answers to the question, but actually, it's kind of a shift and it relates, is that not everybody needs therapy where you give them a diagnosis and you do treatment, but everybody needs to develop greater emotional, mental, energetic, spiritual capacity. And that's really the goal. So it's to be able to have all your thoughts, have all your feelings, really have a mastery, not of how much energy you have like this, but the energetic, your vibration, your frequency, your connection with the universe, however you hold that. Those are the things that we need to develop. And that's not about therapy, patient treatment. It's really about living life very, very fully and richly. Mm -hmm. Because to me, if you're not living and growing, you're stagnating and dying on the other side. You don't stay still and tread water for very long. Sometimes we feel like we're treading water, but we're not, right? So to answer the question that you asked specifically, what do I wish I knew? It's a question people ask, right? And I've thought about it a lot. Well, there's part of me that says, I wish I knew. There's another part of me that really knows that I couldn't know it then like I know it now. And if I did, it wouldn't have the depth or the richness that it has now. So even though I'm somebody that likes things to have happened yesterday, last week, 10 years ago, I do really get that the experiences have made it different. Now, that said, a couple things that would have been cool to have known before I bring the lens of a psychotherapist to whatever I do, right? So I'm not treating, I'm not labeling people with a diagnostic category, but I use that lens of 
understanding emotions and mental functioning. And so what I wish was that I had a deeper understanding of transference and resistance. And I kind of joke, but it's not really a joke. And I say I'm the chief resistor, number one, you know, resistor in chief, because I really get it. And resistance is something that we're taught to push through, right? Push through, make it happen. And entrepreneurs do that. They do better than anybody, right? It's like we wear it as a badge of honor. And it took a while before I realized that I was wearing it as a badge of honor. Like I could compartmentalize. I could use stress as fuel. I could do all of these things. But I wasn't really working with resistance in a way that would get the gold out of it, use it as a gateway, and integrate the things that made you resist. Because you usually resist out of trauma or something unpleasant that's happened. And it's a really positive response. We make it negative. Like, oh, you're resistant. Yeah, you're resistant because you're trying to do something positive and you don't know another way. You're trying to survive. You're trying to be happy, healthy. It's the best way that you know how to do it. So you're holding on. So I say kiddingly and not that I'm that resistor in chief. So the more I understand that, the better I am at what I do. And so if I had understood that earlier, I would have been better, but I couldn't have understood it without lots of those hours that I put in because we get trained that resistance is something you want to get people through, but you're not really in our personal life or even professionally very much taught the ways to do it. And I was very blessed because one of my early trainings, it wasn't the earliest, but one of the really deep trainings that I did, you know, decades ago was it's called modern psychoanalysis. And we dealt so much with resistance. And so whatever I did after that, it made me have a very different understanding about resistance and why we do what we do. Like when we seem to dig in our heels, right? Why we're doing that? Because it's not just that we want to be stubborn or difficult or pain in the butt. We're really trying to accomplish something in the best way we know how. So it would have been great to have an understanding of that earlier. And yet it's really something that had to come from studying myself, right? And really working with a lot of people and seeing what worked and what was going to make the walls and the obstacles. My work is always about shattering limits, right? And if you laugh, push through, you actually get people to dig their heels in more. I mean, you probably know that for you. I know it for me. If somebody starts yeah. telling me, stop. Yeah. So many times I will watch people go through this process of talking themselves into something. They get there and then they meet a little resistance. And instead of pushing through, they stop. And when they stop, they are so close to gold. Mm -hmm. They're so close to being on the other side of the thing, to realizing how great it is that there's that resistance when right. it's a blocker for some people and it's real. Okay. And so the thing is that one of the things I'm really about is taking that and helping people to move through it. You know, there are some people that push through it like bulldozers and then we don't integrate it. We don't get the gold from it. Right. And then other times you get stopped by it. The super successful in your personal life, your business, we're not just talking money, but really having a rich life is when you can navigate that, when you can see what it is and how to move through it, because it's trying to save our life. It's not this thing to bulldoze, and we don't get taught how to make friends with our resistance. We just don't. And that would be such a gift in school, when parents, et cetera, if we could just teach what to do when you feel like, that's a really important message to ourselves. So to learn yeah. how to take the message and then move through it is huge. Would you say that the response that is helpful is to surrender or is it pushing through or is it just stopping and being able to say to yourself the self-realization of like, oh, I'm resisting this and why am I resisting it? You know, I think that answer is going to be, I'm going to kind of say this to a number of different things. It really depends. Mostly I would pick option number three to look at what's happening. But there are times that you're in a situation where you might have to, for that moment, do something and push through it. Generally, that's not a long-term solution because trauma tends to get locked in more. So the best thing really is to recognize what you're doing. If I can tell a fun story, although it isn't always so fun at the time, sometimes I'm resisting something. And sometimes it'd be something really crazy, like 
I'll be mad about something and I'll be digging my heels in. And I'm arguing with somebody from the phone company or the electric company. And my husband will come in and will give me this look like, what are you doing? And I'll say, yeah, I'm doing it. And I'm, I'm going to do it and say how much longer. And I'm like, oh, I think a couple more minutes. And one of the things that's really interesting about it is I had an amazing experience once where we were in the middle of a storm. And I have dogs and I have birds and a fish. The birds have a really hard time if we lose heat. So I was in a position where we had a snowstorm. I live in a place that's built on rock, like Westchester County in New York, got a lot of rocks. So you lose power a lot. And when the electric company kept saying to me, like, a few more hours, two more hours, three more, I was like believing them, which was my bad, because I should have known they're just saying that, right? And so they kept saying it. And every time I called them and they'd say a few more hours, I would just be arguing with them. And finally, it just kind of hit me. It was like two o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, are you done yet? I'm saying to myself. Now, I did something a little different than what you said, but related to surrender. I really went to a different place and I said, okay, this is what it is. It's on me. You know, they do what they do, which they make up these times, have nothing to do with reality. That's on them. But I believe them and I should have known better. That's on me. And what am I going to get? Or is that person going to get? They can't help it. And I was just taking my frustration out when I know that's not who I want to be or how I want to live. And the moment that I said, you know this, are you ready now? Are you ready to stop? This was a long time ago. I do it much faster now because this lesson was amazing. The moment I stopped, and I didn't look at it as surrender, well, sometimes I have, but I made that shift. My daughter, who was very young at the time, I have two daughters, she calls down from the end of the room, mommy, mommy, I figured out what to do about the birds. She was fast asleep. She woke up. Well, I was in resistance and arguing for something that was not going to happen. Like, it's two o'clock in the morning. Well, I should have brought my animals to a friend's house like at seven o'clock at night. And she said, I figured it out. And she figured out how to save the birds. And I have learned that lesson. So I won't say I never do that, but I don't do it so long. I'll kind of say, give me a couple minutes. I'm going to be whatever. Or I don't. I'll say, no, I don't want to be like that. Usually the conversation isn't with my husband, it's with myself. It's like, do you want to be like this? And when I make the shift into who I want to be, then how miraculous that my daughter sleeping down the hall wakes up and she gets the answer. She couldn't get the answer before. And I got yeah. to tell you, we've shared it so many times and places, probably saved so many birds' lives. And yet I couldn't get it while I was in that resistant, angry, like sure. just hitting the wall. So it wasn't a surrender. I don't love that word, although it works for some people, but I chose to really move into a space that was aligned with who I am, who I want to be. And truthfully, I want to leave people better when they get off the phone with me. Thank you for joining us on today's show. I hope that today's session inspires you to live an aligned life where you get to take complete ownership of your feelings and decisions to live in your truth. You can connect with me more at www.maryd.com. You can also catch us on YouTube at The Mary D Show. Head on over to Instagram and Facebook and type in at The Mary D and just look for the little blue check to ensure you're on my official page. 